I'm Annika Lidne here with this week's issue of the Swedish Startup Session and I'm sitting here with Lukas Duschke who is the CEO and founder of Scribe.com a uh, document signing on the net and he has some really interesting things to say about uh, the startup scene, about funding companies in Sweden and about choosing very strange developing languages. Stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East or Africa. Bet you be thanking God. This, this is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Hi, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Session. This time with Lukas Dushko from Scribe.com. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little about yourself. Um, well, I'm uh, Lucas. I founded Scribe. Um, I was uh, the initiator of the idea. Uh, I'm not technical at all, so I had to found, uh, find a technical co-founder. And uh, I got the idea when I was um, when I was uh, working at uh, Klarna mm -hmm. at their business development department, which is a big Swedish. Uh, payment company. Yeah, they're an e-factoring company. Yeah. Uh, highly successful. They just raised one billion Swedish crowns, uh, which is about hundred thousand. No, uh, hundred million euro. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fund, funded by Sequoia. Well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, they're quite successful. They were actually uh, sitting in the same offices, uh, in, in the same house as we are right now. When really? I started out, yeah, and they were actually also sitting uh, when they started out the first time, just the next next door. So we've been following them step by step, okay. and they're my idols. So uh, oh, that's yeah. great. Um, and um, a little bit more, what, what did you do before Klarna? Um, before Klarna, I have I have I would say that I have quite a scattered background. I was uh, studying uh, literature for several years, uh, writing. And the performance, uh, I was doing performance spoken word uh, on stage. Um, and at some point, I realized that yes, I'm, I'm really great at this, but it's not my passion. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in building myself as a product, which is what you're basically doing if yeah. you're a, an artist. So uh, I want to build something that's, that's larger than me, something that's outside of myself. And therefore, I, I had tried for some time to, to do. Uh, to, to start a company, but I kind of didn't know. I didn't have money. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't. I didn't have the connections. So finally, after many years of not wanting to go to school, I, I decided to go to university. To, so I applied for Handelshögskola, mm -hmm. Stockholm School of Economics, business school, and didn't get in. Uh, failed for the first year, uh, but then I got got in. Uh, after having studied for one year. So I studied handles and then I started a company called Spoken Word. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, based on uh, uh, my old network of performance artists. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a really bad idea, an unknown genre uh, with uh, um, uh, an unknown genre basically, uh, very low margins because nobody wanted to pay. Um, and yeah, it, it was doomed to. Uh, take very long time to yeah, build. So yeah. I, I dropped that after one and a half years. But while I was sitting with papers at that company, uh, trying to send them, and I'm terrible with administration, so um, I realized, okay, um, you should do contracting electronically. Yeah. And that was the seed to the idea that I got when I was working at Carl. That's an interesting because I think that in some ways you get the, the view, especially from a lot of blog in the startup community, that you're either like this hyper smart college kid and you drop out and you start this amazing company or you're sort of born uh, an entrepreneur and start you know, selling lemonade when you're nine years old or yeah. something like that. Yeah. 
But it's quite interesting your journey towards uh, towards the company. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but I think I I still think the it doesn't an entrepreneur. Someone said someone said I think I, I saw a interesting blog uh, blog uh, uh, or video blog. Mm-hmm. Um, someone someone discussed this that it's. I think for ma- many entrepreneurs that become serial entrepreneurs, or when you, you the urge is just there, yeah. you need to either find it, identify it, or or you you have the chance to identify it early. And mm-hmm. I think I've always had the urge. Yeah, but when it was focused in, in different areas. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you have different types of entrepreneurship. So people doing lots of uh, maybe fundraising for social uh, social things in the third world, mm-hmm. they might be entrepreneurs at heart. They yeah. just direct it in a different way, I think. Yeah. So what's the idea behind Scribe? You said contracts. Um, contracts? Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily contracts. Mm-hmm. It's signing documents electronically. Mm-hmm. It sounds really boring, mm-hmm. um, but it's, um, it's uh, something that uh, amazes people. It's like when the, uh, I think when the mobile phone came, it was like, oh, I can carry this, <laughs> this heavy thing. Uh, and, and now people have been sitting with papers or they, they've been running around to scan machines and all kinds of strange maneuvers. Mm. And, and then they get, they see our service. It's like, we can explain how much ever before, before they really see the yeah. service. But when they click, it's just like, whoa. Mm. So it's, like a revelation. Yeah. And, and is handling contracts a big expenditure, a big cost for a lot of companies? Um, yes, it is. Um, it's uh, basically between 30 to 100 euros per, per document uh, to handle it. And we've seen quite Ooh. substantial cost savings uh, uh, from, from companies that have implemented e signing, for example, um, SSSB, a uh, housing company that implemented, they saved. 250 crowns per document, uh, and this is on their the result yeah. at the end of the year, and about 30,000 euros only in uh, um, uh, what's it called postage, yeah. um, uh, and that's on 4,000 documents. Um, so it's it's quite substantial, but but uh, important is that this is not really what the companies care most about. Mm-hmm. I had an extreme case where a company could save about 60,000 euros per month using our service, um, uh, but but um, that was, and, and they had a cost focus, trying yeah. to reduce costs, but that's not, that's never the, the reason why people buy. Okay. The reason why people buy is uh, the feeling, mm-hmm. like the feeling of uh, speed, the feeling of uh, uh, being uh, organized, being organized, control, yeah. um, customer service, um, also for, especially for the sales manager, our service is uh, loved by sales managers because mm. they can close deals faster. And so uh, uh, our customers, for example, my uh, my news desk for a call, they 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 used to have a closing of about two weeks, yeah. two to four weeks with us. Uh, call, for example, they close about twenty five percent of the documents close in in thirty minutes, mm. and another. Um, 50 percent are closed within, I think, five hours, and then seventy-five uh, percent are closed within forty-eight hours or twenty-four hours. Like and that. Did, did these companies used to send contracts by email or post them? Um, uh, my news is used to email them, mm-hmm. uh, and this people underestimate the the like the step of uh, printing it, yeah. texting, and scanning it again. It yeah. just ends or on the desk. It by post, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just ends on the, up yeah. on the desk. And yeah, you have the OK by email. Mm. It works perfectly, but there's no system. That's not yeah. a system. Like, where do you have all your contracts? Where's yeah. your company value? Yeah. Like, is that in some inbox? When you when you find that person, what happens? Yeah. When they quit, or when they steal the computer, mm. what happens? Well, your company value, mm. not good. <laughs> and uh, we we have met we have met companies that have lost uh, hundreds documents mm. uh, and that's only the, the ones they know are lost yeah. um, and they can't serve customers because they don't know what contract they have 
Okay. Yeah. Um, and the business model, how, how do you charge for this? Because, I mean, it's apparently that, that companies want to pay for a service like this. Yeah. Um, so, um, actually, we have uh, just make, made a pivot. Uh, mm -hmm. So, we are... Maybe this is the, the official <laughs> announcement. We have pivoted. Uh, we are now only selling um, per user. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and previously you sold? Per signature. Okay. Um, we will still sell per signature for larger accounts mm -hmm. where it's not as uh, predictable how many users they mm -hmm. have. You might have one user sending huge amounts mm -hmm. of documents and we, uh, yeah. But basically, uh, we and see. And that's producers that in the company, not per, per person who signs the uh, contract. No, right? exactly. Uh, the important thing is that. The recipient never has to sign a document. Mm -hmm. Has to, I mean, never has to have uh, an account with yeah. us because uh, we really wanted the the, the uh, to build a company mm -hmm. where um, you're not dependent on the network effect. Mm -hmm. Of course, we will have network effects yeah. anyway, but we are not dependent on the network effect to make the company scale. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we can have one customer sending ten thousand documents, yeah. um, and none of their recipients need mm -hmm. the service. Um, but the nice thing is that they can sign up for the service. Yeah. So we get uh, some virality mm. by each invite to a contract and a demo. Mm. Uh, and we see that the effect is quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And was this, this uh, not being dependent on the network and viral effect important for you when you started the company? Because there we see a lot of companies that are I mean, their success is basically depending on that they get a huge amount of traffic and a huge amount of users. Yeah. Um, yes, definitely. I, I, I'm a high-risk person. Mm -hmm. uh, someone said that I've never met someone that's uh, as risk non-averse as you are. <laughs> uh, but I also don't don't want to build like a, a oh like only fail or only success. Yeah. Um, I think that um, um, I think it's the the amount of failures in that for that model mm. is just huge. Yeah. Uh, we don't see all the failures, yeah. like the, not not even the tip of yeah. that mountain of failures. And to believe that you will be the person to make success, mm. well, and especially perhaps coming from a small country like Sweden and not being in in the valley with all the networks and, and the hype and so on. Yeah, yeah. If, if I would have known all the hypest people and would know that I could get access to to this uh, Twitter, to all these Twitter guys yeah. that have one, two, three, five million followers and we get instant <laughs> spread. The school effect. Yeah, I, I might think about that, but no. Yeah. Um, so how many are you working in the team right now? Uh, we're thir 13 on the oh. team. Yeah. Uh, so we are we are uh, eight technicians, seven developers, and one sysadmin, mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest is um, for sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And you have had a quite uh, unusual journey, I know, with with your company, and both how you employed your choice of technology and where you have your people around the world. Could you tell us about that? Um, yeah. Because that's been starting to become a bit of a legend in the Swedish uh, startup community. Um, yeah, so it starts basically. We have had a, we built the whole team on hundred, uh, well, twelve thousand euros or fourteen thousand euros for the first year, and uh, at the point when it wasn't possible to do anymore, uh, we were seven or eight people, uh, seven people working full time, I think. Um, uh, so I had to raise a little bit of cash, but uh, basically most were still not paid until our fundraising round last autumn. Okay. Um, so about some some have worked for more than a year uh, that without almost any salary. Mm -hmm. and we found them online, a lot of them, because we built the service in Haskell. Uh, That's pretty strange. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're all almost the only company in the world that. Uh, works in Haskell and it's awesome like I would recommend anybody to do a company in Haskell because there's loads of very talented uh, um, engineers out there yeah. that just long
for working with Haskell. Yeah. There's and no and for, for our non-technical viewers, what is Haskell? Haskell is the closest you can come to pure mathematical code. Okay. Uh, it's been defined from start to be as pure as possible. And, um, it is close to Erlang, which also for a non-coder doesn't say anything. Um, but but say, yeah, what, what is the benefit of Haskell? Well, uh, one of the main benefits yeah. is that you have, in most other programming languages, you have lots of side effects. Yeah. So when you code, the, the amount of bugs grow exponentially, but you don't have at all side effects mm. in Haskell, which means that you have a linear growth of, uh, of, uh, of bugs, yeah. uh, and they're directly related to the code that you're, you're programming. Mm. So it's easier to find, and it's easier to maintain sustain, and so in the long term, you're well, better off building a large scale system mm -hmm. faster than in other programming languages. That's my very, uh, very non techy <laughs> description. Yeah. Uh, all the but techies out there, um, I, will, I must uh, make a disclaimer <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, did, did the choice of Haskell have anything to do with, with uh, that, that uh, contracts and documents that are signed must be safe and it's kind of safety, security issues? Uh, well, of course, we, we push, push for this. Yeah. We, we, uh, the only ones that have built systems in this are US government, um, <laughs> which built their super secure storage and also uh, financial institutions for mm -hmm. transactional algorithms. Mm -hmm. But um, no, uh, that wasn't the thought from the start. Mm -hmm. my, my partner, he was just in love with the language. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really scared of his, uh, uh, his choice initially. But on my blog, you can read um, lots of my reflections mm -hmm. there. And, uh, it's only been super positive. So, but but you have to be ready to have a either a big big pile of cash so that you can bring people from all over the world, yeah. or to make a distributed uh, development department. Yeah. So everybody. And, and how how do you get seven or eight people working more or less full time without getting paid? <laughs> um, passion. Yeah. It's it's all about passion. Um, and their their opportunity to work with Pascal basically. Yeah, for developers that yeah. was really important, yeah. um, but also uh, the team spirit, mm -hmm. um, the, the team really enjoy working with each other, yeah. uh, so once someone starts and they fit with the, with the culture, uh, they, they just love it. Mm -hmm. um, for, for many non-technical founders like you, I mean, getting the technical co-founders and the, the other engineers is really, really the big hurdle. Yeah. Uh, so how did you manage that? Well, that was my I identified my big, big, biggest problem yeah. uh, instantly. Uh, so I I tried to find I just made I, I spammed all the in engineers I knew, mm -hmm. and one of them was uh, Gratian, uh, that also worked at Klarna. So yeah. I knocked his shoulder. Uh, asked him for lunch, we had lunch, and um, three days later he was fired. Uh, so we got started with the company instantly, which uh, was really, uh, I was really lucky, I yeah. guess. Um, uh, it's, yeah, and... So from, from fired to CTO in three, <laughs> three easy steps. <laughs> yeah, no, easy step. <laughs> no, the CTO role wasn't very glamorous <laughs> in, in, initially, I think. It was me being a pain in the ass. <laughs> 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 so, so, so who are, are your main competitors? Uh, well, we have DocuSign, mm -hmm. 35 million euros investment. We have, and that's Silicon Valley based, of course. We have yeah. uh, EchoSign, they got purchased, uh, acquired by, um, uh, by Loeb. Mm -hmm. um, and we have Right Signature. I think those three are the, the main competitors. Yeah. Then we have loads all over the world. But um, I think common for all of them is that they're basically as small as we are, uh, but uh, I think most of them also don't have the muscles that we have. Okay, in, so, in what way? Well, development, fund, 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 funding-wise or mm -hmm. product-wise, uh, so we've, we've, we ha we've had the chance to, to be fast. Yeah. Uh, so I can it's imagine it's being acquired, for instance, by Adobe makes you, can, can make you quite slow. Uh, well, one of our partners, <laughs> yeah. I will not mention who, but he, he laughed and said, yeah, that's perfect, it's, <laughs> it's doomed to fail. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> let's hope that's the case, I, I won't 
be premature, yeah. but... Uh, uh, you said you got funding last fall, or this fall? Um, we have actually, for the last 12 months, raised capital three times. Oh! Uh, anniversary so, so. is tomorrow for that. So three, three times yeah. we, we raised capital and um, I guess by the time this goes live, uh, it will also be official that we have uh, just landed around last Wednesday. Ooh. Uh, so uh, we will have a new strong shoulder group. Uh, amongst others, Santa Ling, who is uh, one of Sweden's uh, uh, richest persons. He mm -hmm. founded Brunner Partners. Uh, oh yeah, famous uh, capital company. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we have uh, Jarno Van Atapio, yeah. who founded Melli. Mm -hmm. .com. Uh, we have um, Anders Jonsson, who founded the, the, the famous uh, Swedish uh, dot-com boom company, Nokom. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and a few more. And so. and how? Because I mean, one of the most common complaints when when we talk about Swedish startups and the Swedish startup scene is is the lack of capital and especially angel and seed capital. Yeah. Uh, most sort of so-called uh, venture capital companies prefer that you have like uh, at least one million dollars in revenue and you're in the black and. Yes. Um, <laughs> No risk at all. Yes. So, so how have have your process around raising capital been? Uh, well, uh, how has the process been? I think. Uh, well, how how did you do it? <laughs> oh, how did I do it? Uh, I think one one of my one of my main tips yeah. uh, that I really want to uh, want to emphasize is that if if you uh, how, how, how long are we? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I thought I, I didn't see the recording. I was like, oh, did that? Oh, no. What is the recording? So, uh, sorry, perfect. one of your main uh, tips. No, one of my main tips, I think, is to have a deadline. Yeah. Um, and to to explain that deadline and, mm. and be very clear about it. And um, you also need to have something to back up that deadline, yeah. which means you need to be able to proceed mm. even though you don't have the money. Yeah. Uh, at the deadline. Because what happens if you don't have a deadline is that everybody will procrastinate yeah. forever um, and uh, then you'll just end up raising capital forever. Mm. And so being so bootstrapped as mm. we were, mm. uh, we could continue without the money. Yeah. Uh, but it would be much more difficult. Mm. So I could basically say, okay, you're late to the round, sorry, next time. Mm. Uh, I'm closing Friday. Mm. And on Friday I was closing, yeah. and I've done that every single time, and it worked. It's going to be a, being a bit tough. Yes, it's yes, and it's, it's, it does give uh, people uh, respect. That the, yeah, respect and the sense of urgency yeah. that, that's needed to... Because otherwise I've seen people just, just procrastinate. Some that I contacted in the beginning that didn't get those, uh, like, this when I'm closing. Yeah. It can just they, they were just procrastinating for two months. Yeah. Uh, so we we raised first time in two months, second time two months, this time one month. Mm. Um, and did did you get to the the, the, the goal you, you set each time, or did you raise a lower round than you had? Every time I, I raised a lower round. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's the cost of being quick. Yeah. Um, so I raised a lower round, uh, but also. Um, um, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't compromise too much on the price because I wanted people to invest more. Mm -hmm. And every time they, if they would have invested more, that would have been better for them. So how how much is the total funding? Right total now? funding now is well, it's tiny. You know, Sweden <laughs> invests a lot. Uh, it's five hundred thousand euros. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have enough to to get around until next. Of the next year, I think. Yeah. But did you? Uh, no, did you we get... have starvation salaries. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you had a product. You had had launched, and you had a product when you raised the first round, right? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. I, I, yes, I did. I had a paying customer, yeah. um, and it was a good brand. Um, and now we have a. We even have a bank as a customer. Mm -hmm. I can't say who. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
But, Do you uh, think that's the problem often that people expect to raise rounds like in Silicon Valley without basically a pr product? You have just a concept and you try go, going out raising money on that. <laughs> What's the main problem? Um, I don't know, I think it's from two sides. But I, I, in general, I think you, there's too little, little, little knowledge about raising capital. Mm -hmm. So the entrepreneurs don't know how to do, the investors don't know how to invest, um, and they can't really meet. And, uh, and well, in Sweden, it's, it's also a, there's one there's a big gap between between because um, if if you really want to build a company that that's able to grow properly, uh, you need to be funded properly. Mm -hmm. And if in, in Sweden prices are so low yeah. for companies, so to get funded properly, you have to sell so much of a company mm -hmm. that the incentive will go away very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's I think that's the main reason why there's so little investment being made in Sweden because the the entrepreneurs just feel this in yeah. instinctively. I won't get anywhere with this money. Mm. I'll have to sell a lot and so finally I won't have anything. And the uh, the investors think the price is too high because they see nobody else is investing at uh, a higher price. I'm sorry but I think the price must be higher to get enough capital. Yeah. Uh, because you can't sell more than 20, maybe, maybe maximum 30% mm. at a round. And it was quite interesting, I, I listened to Jason Calacanis at This Week in Startups uh, recently and he said that, that the sort of average valuation in Silicon Valley then for, for that first round for 30% of the company get at least 3 million dollars. Yeah, okay, in Sweden it's like <laughs> 30,000 euro. Yeah. Uh, that's what, that's what, yeah. what, the, what they would like to invest and it's like, yeah, okay, I can't even can't even employ one person with yeah. a decent salary. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so what's your goal? You, today you have company, uh, offices in Stockholm and London. Um, no, we are only based in Stockholm. In Stockholm yes, okay. uh, we follow the, the UK operation. It made us too scattered. Yeah. So we're now focusing only on Sweden and we expect to go, uh, go into one more country. Mm -hmm. I won't say which, uh, by, by next year. Okay. And then we would probably also go with proper VC funding. Yeah. Anyway, I want to give a tip to all the VCs that <laughs> okay. see this out. Uh, you have to come to Sweden and invest in Swedish companies. Yeah. You'll get like bargain prices. Yeah. Come here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs here. We can connect you to all of them because uh, it's ridiculous. It's fantastic uh, companies being made, yeah. being created right now, and nobody funding them. Mm. So, what, what's the most important lesson that you have learned through the journey with, with uh, Skype? What is the single, what's the most important lesson? Mm. I don't know. That's difficult. That's a really difficult question. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I've learned that, um, I don't know. You don't know? No, I'm blank. I'm blank. Okay, yes. we can come back to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, no, what? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that the choice of technology can be... I didn't think that it would be that, that important. Mm -hmm. um, and, but of course, we made a strange choice. Yeah. Uh, but that has been, and I think has only just started to become. We will have much more in exchange from that. Uh, but which technology you choose defines your company yeah. in the way you can, who you can recruit, mm -hmm. how you can recruit them, uh, when you can recruit them, how much it will cost you. Uh, when you do an IT company, technology choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but I made a, like, he made a crazy technology choice, my co-founder, it happened to be a really good one. Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine, I mean, not being an a, a engineer myself, but, but you go into a bank, for instance, and saying that you have a working with Haskell and all the US government systems, I, I, you know, it, it inspires confidence. Yes. Yeah. So, so do you have uh, any advice to other entrepreneurs apart from the funding advice you did previously? 
Yes, uh, I think I think that doing uh, doing the standard recruitment process mm -hmm. that you're expected to do as it's always been done and mm -hmm. as it's always uh, as, as as people do it, watch out uh, because you will get a lot of people saying a lot of things that they expect you to to hear, mm. they want to hear, and you won't hear what you really need to hear. Mm. Like, is this person really, really interested? Mm. Because every single recruitment is so crucial. Yeah. So you need to find people that are just, that will be obsessed about what you mm. do. Um, and you can't find those people unless you hear their, pa their passion. Mm. So ask for their passion, ask for the vision, ask for what they want to do in life and do it when they don't know that you're interviewing them. Because mm -hmm. they tell you the truth and then you, then you know that you can recruit them or not. Which means basically that you have to create this network among the kind of people you want to create. Oh, um, or recruit, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you have to create a network, but also always be open yeah. to... Like, I recruited my bank man. <laughs> like the guy that was supposed to, I don't know why we met, but uh, we had a really good meeting and for so, I noticed he was interested so I invited him for lunch yeah. and then then he could open up more mm -hmm. and, and finally he started working with us. Mm -hmm. So always look at that, like, that spark yeah. where you're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, do you think that, that big companies can, can learn something from, from your experience and from the startup uh, world process? Um, hmm. What can they learn? Uh, well, truth to be told, I've never worked at a big company, uh, except Klarna when they had about 150 people. Yeah. Now they're, I don't know, 800 or something. Um, that's only two years ago, <laughs> but um, I don't know. It seems like the the big colossus they are uh, they are too slow, and I think just like for example the, the disruption that will happen in the legal legal environment, yeah. now, um, they will. Uh, I think this disruption will be actually global and cro cross industries. Mm. Um, there will be so much uh, things happening for the upcoming years. Mm -hmm. They say we have a new re revolution going on yeah. with, uh, with all the, uh, the the new technology coming, and I think many of the old companies they will really crumble, mm -hmm. uh, and they will discover their own uh, slowness too late, um, and you will have quite many new new market leaders mm -hmm. in new industries mm -hmm. that you were not expecting. And I think, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. I, I've discovered quite a lot of um, uh, companies who don't really want to face that, who are very, feel very secure where they are, and they don't really want to, to look into this new bright future, um, don't really prepare for it, don't they? Or, or even conscious about it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, and and all, also, on the other hand, there's those that you get really surprised, yeah. like, what, wow, is this company this aggressive? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the, the ones that are just one of the main competitors with a few others, mm -hmm. they'll just excel. I think uh, one really interesting example in Sweden is uh, Tele2. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think they have a really interesting company culture, even though being so big, mm -hmm. but they seem to be very aggressive, very very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Thank you for thank talking you, to me. Yes. And uh, good luck with everything. Yes, thank you. Bye bye. Ciao.